Hello, welcome to the barn. My name is Joanne Knight. This barn buddy is going to talk about this block. I have a special quilt that I'm working on and it's a little bit of a surprise so you won't be able to see the quilt itself until I get finished with it but I can share with you this block and I want to show you a couple of tricks that I came up with to be able to work on it. These patterns that are in each of the corners of the block is a pattern designed by Kim Diamond and you can see from the pattern tab that this pattern is just one that fits into the corner. I wanted the pattern to go in all four corners so there's a little trick that I've come up with to make sure that it fits and it's exactly in the same position on each corner because these are straight lines and the straight lines have to be correct. The first thing I have is a boundary of what my block size is going to be. And I have drawn that out for you with draw boundary. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this pattern onto the screen and it is by Kim Diamond and I'm gonna use my grid lines. You see those grid lines right there? I have them set to five inches on my grid and that's okay, I can set them to anything that I want to because whenever I do pattern to boundary, and place this pattern, Creative Studio is going to automatically size it. So I don't want to go with a three inch grid because that's going to make it a little bit difficult to see. I'm going to position the pattern exactly like I want it as if those grid lines are the same lines of my block. The next thing that I'm going to do is go into Circular Array left click on that it's an icon on my tool strip and creative studio is going to automatically place those patterns but that's not where i want them to be so i'm going to uncheck connect and i'm going to snap my grid snap not my end snap but i want my grid snap and i am going to hover over this blue circle. You can see whenever I get close to it, my mouse turns into a crosshair. Hold down my left mouse button and pull those patterns. I want them to be a little bit farther out. You see how it's snapping to that grid every time? I want them to be in a square, bless their heart. I never let go of my left mouse button, so I want them to be in a square. Now I can let go of my left mouse button and I can say, okay, because those patterns are now exactly the same distance from each quote seam line as it is from the other one. And that's what I want them to be. I can select the patterns with a marquee select and I can cycle through to my F10 anchors and make them a little bit closer if I want to. I can pull them down to nine inches because my block is nine inches. These are the selected patterns. I can type a nine in and hit enter because freeze aspect is on. Do it again, please. If it doesn't pay attention to you the first time, then just do it again. I want to save this pattern. And the reason that I want to save this pattern is because I'm going to use pattern to boundary. I only used it one time in my quilt, but perhaps I have a quilt that has 20 or 25 of these blocks and I want it to be the same every time. So I'm going to right click while these patterns are selected, left click on save pattern, it brings up the name of the pattern. I don't want it in my database. I'm just going to put it in my project. And I am going to say save and close. And Creative Studio puts that pattern into my project list. Now I can select my boundary. I can left click on pattern to boundary. And Creative Studio is going to place those patterns exactly where I want them to be. A quarter inch margin is into play because of my project properties. So it comes in a quarter inch off of the seam lines, just exactly like I want it. So that's the way that I did this particular part of that quilt to make sure that that pattern 
was the same in all four corners. The other thing that is really cool about this block, I come from a hand applique background and this block is hand applique and it's done beautifully by Joan Oham, who's a friend of mine. And she gave the block to me. When Creative Studio first came out with the demo version, we learned that we could draw an art from the head of the machine. And because I come from a hand applique background, I immediately thought, I wonder if we can use the head of the machine to go around applique instead of going click, 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 trying to do the stitch of the ditch. So I tried it and it worked perfectly. And this is a good block for me to show you that. I've been teaching this since the demo version of 7 came out, and I have been really happy with it. The clicks are the same regardless of whether you are in standalone or you are using the head of the machine. So let me show you how I do that. I'm going to left click on Draw R, and I am going to start in this position with my first Click, or if I were at the head of the machine, I would click the bottom right keypad button. This is going to be my first point. This is my middle point. This is my last point. Around this curve is my middle point. And around to the other side of the curve is my ending point, a middle point and an ending point. Now I have a straight line coming up, so let me show you how to do a straight line. You still have a middle point, but you just don't put any height on it. So I'm gonna click in the center and then click on the other side. And you can see from the pink line that I have a pretty much straight line, even though I'm still using draw arc. This is my ending point. This is my middle point. This is my ending point. You see how that pink line just absolutely hugs that applique? It just works so well to be able to do this. This is going to be my middle point. This is my ending point. This is my middle point. And this is my ending point. I have another one that is pretty much a straight line. And this is how I am doing my stitch in the ditch around applique now with the head of the machine. It makes a much smoother, smoother stitch, and it also allows me to do a lot less clicks. Let me show you right up here in the open area of the CAD what I'm talking about. I'm gonna select my draw art, my first point, then my height, then my last point. If I want a straight line, then my next point just has no height, then to the next point and the ending point. And that's how that works in Creative Studio version seven. I'll be continuing to show you bits and pieces of this quilt until we do the big reveal on it. So I hope that this helps you and I hope you find creative ways to use version 7. Thank you.